Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Joey, and I'm a tutor on Chegg Tutors. Um, I'm at the University of Oregon in the Stacks today, and we are going to talk about homogeneous differential equations. So um, I assume you're in some sort of differential equations class, and you know that a differential equation is an equation, like I have on the second line, uh, involving a function y and its derivatives, y prime, y double prime and potentially even higher order derivatives. Um, today we're going to talk about a special form or family of differential equations called homogeneous differential equations in which um, the right side of that equation is zero and all the terms with y are on the left side of the equation. Um, this here is also specifically a linear differential equation. Um, so yeah, like I said, the essential um, component of a differential equation being homogeneous is that um, all its terms that do not have y equal zero. So um, coefficients can be any function of t. They can be sine of t, um, e to the t, ln of t, some polynomial in t, anything you want. Um, but what I'm going to talk about today is a special case of that, um, in which we have um, constant coefficients, we say. So these functions, these coefficient functions, here are all constants. So for example, here f of t is equal to 1, g of t is equal to negative 1, and h of t is equal to negative 2. Um, and as you'll see on the right, we have a 0. Uh, making it a homogeneous equation. So, yeah, let's get to solving this. I'm going to go to the next page. Um, I'll just rewrite it again. Y double prime minus, minus y prime minus 2y equals 0. So, usually when we solve differential equations of this type, we start by guessing what form the solution might take. And I'm just going to tell you that for constant coefficient equations like this, we always guess that the solution is of the form e to the rt. Sorry about that. So r in this case is any um, constant, like 3 or 5 or something like that. Um, and what we have to do is plug this back into the, the equation to figure out what r has to be to solve the equation. So let's do that. Um, and to do that, we're going to have to take the first and second derivatives of y. Um, in this case, y prime, just applying the exponential rule and the chain rule, we're going to get r e to the rt, and y prime, just bring out r again, and we get r squared, e to the rt. So um, we have y and its derivatives, so let's plug that back into the equation. So we got r squared e to the rt. Sorry about that. r squared e to the rt. Hope you can read that. Um, minus y prime, which is r e to the rt, um, minus 2y, and y, I'm sorry about that, it's just e to the rt. And we set that equal to 0. Um, great. So you'll see that e to the rt is a factor in each of the three terms that we have in this equation. 
So I'm going to factor that out. And then we're going to see what we have left over. So in the first term, we just have r squared. Second term, we have minus r. In the third term, we just have 2. And so what we have here is a product of two things that equals 0. That means one of them has to equal 0. Um, if you graph e to the rt, r can be whatever you want. Um, you'll see that e to the rt can never equal 0 for any value of t. So we can cancel this out, and we can conclude that r squared minus um, r minus 2 equals 0. Cool. Um, this is a normal quadratic equation. Um, you probably solved them a whole bunch. I'll rewrite it on the next screen. r squared minus r minus 2 equals 0. Um, so you could solve this using the quadratic formula, or uh, you could just factor. So that's what I'm going to do here. Um, we see that negative 2 and 1 multiply to negative 2 and add to negative 1. So that's a pretty easy factorization. And so it looks like uh, we have two potential solutions, um, one of which r equals 2, and one is r equals negative 1, which tells us that um, we have two different solutions to our equation, um, one of which is e to the 2t, and the other y2 is e to the negative t. Um, great. So we have two solutions to this equation that corresponds to the fact that it's a second order equation, and uh, meaning it, uh, the highest derivative is, a, is the second derivative. Um, and so we now want what we call the general solution. And for a linear differential equation, which is what we have here, um, the general solution is given by what we call a linear combination of the individual solutions. So here, that would be C1, Y1, plus C2, Y2, where C1 and C2 are just any constants. And if we were given um, initial conditions for this equation, we would be able to solve for those constants, um, figure out what they would have to be. Um, so this is always the general solution of a linear differential equation. You just take all the individual solutions and take any arbitrary linear combination. So I will write out the final answer for our equation. And it's going to involve the constants c1 and c2. Oops. So that is our final answer. Um, like I said, this is just a special example of a homogeneous differential equation. Um, if you would like to do more examples of this, you can find me on Chegg. Um, I hope that helps.